Hi, and welcome to the video on adjectives. Um, adjectives are kind of just like in English in that they describe a noun. Um, and you've already done genitives, so you kind of know the idea of adjectival modification. I think adjectives are the most obvious of the adjectival modifications out there in Latin because uh, their name is uh, in the title. And uh, also, they're just directly, it's all they do. They just modify a noun. That's pretty much all they exist for. Um, and you know these in, in English pretty well. Uh, so what I've done is left a giant blank here with a picture of my cat. And you can assign whatever adjectives you like. I might say uh, the tired cat as he is sleeping, or the lazy cat, or the striped cat. You can almost see that uh, he has his stripes there. So um, any of the possible ones, uh, I guess for the sake, I will put tired. And of course, tired describes the cat, and therefore it is an adjective. It is a feature of the cat. Um, that's really all there is to it. In Latin, it's going to be a tiny bit more complicated, but not too much. As long as you know your, um, your cases and you know about gender and number, it should be fine. Uh, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But with, uh, with that in mind, let us get started. All right, so we're going to start by just looking at a couple dictionary entries of adjectives in Latin. I think we see right here, bonus, bona, bonum, good, malus, mala, malum, bad, uh, pulcare, pulcra, pulcrum, beautiful. Now you'll notice, um, there's no gender. Uh, a noun will have a gender. Uh, these have all three genders, and they're all in one case, so it's kind of interesting. Um, so let's just take a look here. Bonus, bona, bonum. You can kind of see, well, the us ending and the a ah ending, uh, those can both be nominative, right? And then if you think, oh, yeah, well, there's three genders, and this one looks masculine, this one looks feminine. And if you add this one as neuter, then this can also be nominative. So, yeah, the case given in a Latin dictionary entry for the, for the nouns is, of course, the nominative case. You'll note that your case endings and adjectives are exactly the same as in nouns. You get the us, all right, you get the a, ah, you get the um. Uh, you'll notice that you're in first and second declension. That's cool. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but it, it's actually, uh, it's kind of cool. There's no new endings to memorize. And you're given the nominatives in all three. Okay, so let's look at malus, mala, malum. You'll notice it's just the root, mal, with the same endings on them. Us, a, um. You might hear me refer to these in class as usa um, or I like to call them two one two adjectives. Well, why would I call it a two one two adjective? Well, if we're going masculine, feminine, neuter in that order, you can almost see I've lined them up here. Uh, the first one is masculine, and it takes second declension. The second one's feminine, and it takes first declension. The third one is neuter, and it takes the second neuter. Declension. Remember, the second neuter is the same as the second masculine, except with the neuter rules attached. All right. And then we see this one more, pulcher, pulcra, pulcrum. You'll notice um, here you have a weird masculine one. All right. You still have the masculine, feminine, and the neuter. It's two, one, two. Um, but the ER, it's just like weir. Uh, if you remember the noun veer, you remember there can be an R in the nominative. All right. And that's what this ER is doing in pulcare. It's doing the same thing. So it doesn't always have to be an us. It can be an ER as well. Pulcare, pulcra, pulcrum. Um, but it's still 2, 1, 2. Masculine, feminine, neuter. And you're like, well, how do I know which one to do? Well, um, we're going to get to that in the next slide. Uh, before that, we just got to know the three parts show the three different genders. All right, so we're actually going to match our noun in three different things, in case, number, and gender. And so the dictionary entry tells you the adjectival form of each gender in the nominative case. And it's up to you. You're going to have to create the adjective form that agrees with the noun. Or in fact, uh, since we're not going to be creating too much Latin, your, your responsibility is more going to be to recognize when it's agreeing with something. However, let's, uh, let's move on, and uh, hopefully this will make a little bit more sense. Make sure to rewind this uh, slide if you didn't understand what I just said. All right, so just like I said in the last slide, they need to agree with a noun in case, 
in number, which I'm going to use that symbol for, and gender. All right. So unless it agree, it does. If it doesn't agree in any of those things, it has to agree in all things. If it doesn't agree in any of those things, it does not agree with its noun. Um, if it agrees in case and number but not gender, it does not agree. It has to do all three with a noun. Okay. Uh, let me write that in there for emphasis. All three. All right. Uh, they have the same endings as nouns in the second and first declensions, depending on the gender. And the noun it modifies. Um, remember, this is the adjectives that you know right now are two, one, two adjectives, which means masculine, feminine, neuter. And so if it's a masculine noun that you need to agree with, it's going to be in the second declension. If it's a feminine noun, it'll be in the first declension. If it's a neuter, it'll be second declension neuter. Let's uh, take a look over here at these examples on the right side of the screen. Uh, you see bonus weir. Notice, the ending doesn't need to match. All right. Remember I talked about those R endings. That's a nominative singular, masculine. Okay. It's nominative singular, masculine. So is bonus. The U.S. ending, nominative singular masculine, in the second declension, like I said. And it does agree with we're. Femini malai. You notice femini. It could be genitive, it could be dative, it could be nominative plural. But so can malai. So it's actually, this uh, this is an identical um, ending. It won't always be the case. We'll see that in, the, in actually a very short second. Um, but... Here, malai agrees with femini. You're like, well, why did malo sa um take the ae? Because femini is feminine. And therefore, if we look down here, if it's feminine, you take the first declension. In the first example, bonus weir, weir is masculine. Therefore, bonus is in the second declension because it's masculine. Okay? Now, regus. Regus is not neuter. I did, so I don't think that I'm just doing one of each. Regus, remember, is masculine. It means king. But this is genitive. It's singular, and it's masculine. However, you don't remember, or you might remember, this one's third declension. Okay? So that's why it has an IS ending. However, adjectives, as of right now, do not go in the third declension. They will. Don't worry. Just not right now. So, we see pulchry. Well, remember, this is masculine, okay, and singular. If it's masculine, we're in the second declension in adjective land. So here, we have our masculine, genitive, singular ending in the second declension. Do these agree? Yes, they do. Put a big check mark. It agrees. All right. So note, it doesn't have to have the exact same ending. It has to agree in case, number, and gender. So with that in mind... Let's move on to the next slide. We'll do some examples. All right, so then we're going to do a little exercise called Does Malo Agree With? Um, and then we're going to add a bunch of nouns and see if they agree. Uh, Malo is, of course, from Malos, Mala, Malum. So we have to think that Malo is going to have the following possibilities. It could be dative. It could be ablative has to be singular, can be masculine or neuter, all right? So those are our possibilities. It can be dative or ablative, has to be singular, but it can be masculine or neuter. So there's quite a bit of possibility here. And, well, how do we know that? Well, because the O ending here is second declension. If you look at your endings, you'll note that O cannot occur in the first declension, so feminine's out. And... That means that in second declension, it can be masculine or neuter. Okay? So, we look at agro. This is from agar, agri, masculine. So, it's second declension, which means that O ending, being the exact same, is actually also going to be dative or ablative, masculine, and singular. So, yes, that one agrees. 
about Reggie? Uh, well, this is from Rex Regis, so it's masculine. Okay, that means that, uh, it's from King. And he's in the third declension here, remember? We just did an example. That's dative. It's masculine, and that's singular. So, hey, that one agrees too. Dative, masculine, singular. Okay? Uh, feminis here. Uh, feminis uh, is dative or ablative. Okay, that, that works. However, it is feminine and it is plural. Both of those tell us no, that's not going to work, so no for feminis. Oh, templa. Let's take a look. Well, templa is neuter, which means the A ending is a nominative or accusative plural. Doesn't agree in case. Doesn't agree in number. Doesn't agree at all. Okay, so no, Milo does not agree with templa. But weary. This one you have to be careful. You have to remember that weary is second declension. In which case, we remember that it's nominative plural or genitive singular masculine. However, we're looking for a dative or ablative singular. So, nominative plural doesn't work. Genitive plural doesn't work. This word does not work either. So the only two that agree are these first two because we need either dative or ablative, masculine, and singular. We could also have neuter, but we didn't have one. So, hope that makes sense. Keep moving. Rewind if you need to. Alright, so here we have an example. Uh, try to make a long sentence. I try to get uh, as many adjectives in here as possible. So what I'm going to do, as I'm going to show you, we're going to draw arrows from the adjectives to the nouns they modify as we go. Okay? So we're going to add in that step as we, uh, as we read through the sentence. Now you'll also notice there's, an, there's a preposition here with an ablative. We haven't gotten to those yet, but it's pretty easy because the word in just means in and it takes an ablative. So don't freak out at all. Just see if you can follow along because it's actually not that hard of a concept to understand. Okay? So uh, templa, we know it's neuter, and the A ending in neuter means it's nominative or accusative plural. Okay? Bona. Now bona being a second declension can also be neuter, nominative, accusative plural. So it's the exact same case number and gender, and I'm drawing that arrow. Okay. In terra pulchra. Now, I don't want you to worry as much about the fact that this is a preposition. I'm just going to put parentheses around it right now. Uh, but I want you to note that pulchra and terra do agree. See those lines over the A's? Those are macra. And uh, that means that that A is an ablative singular. And they both have that ablative singular feminine uh, ending. Therefore, those agree. We've had good luck so far in the sentence with things agreeing, um, and have or sorry, and, and having uh, the same ending as well. You can see the uh, the a endings agree in templa bona. You can see these long a endings with the macra above them, with terra pulchra. But here, next one, we're going to have frater malus. Now, frater is nominative, singular, masculine, and we see this us, and we say, well, that's also nominative, singular, and masculine, okay? And if you uh, don't know why, I would rewind to the last couple slides and check that out, okay? But you see, it doesn't have to agree an ending, because this is still nominative, still singular, still masculine. They do agree. And because it's nominative, we have to, remember we're translating, <laughs> we're doing a sentence, so we have to remember that Templar can't be accusative now because we already have our nominative over there. And we see regus. We say, okay, well, regus, regus is a genitive. Hey, wait, does malus agree with regus? No, okay, remember, malus is nominative singular, so it does not agree with regus. Uh, the genitive singular masculine here, okay, that's good. Uh, and then fuck, it's a verb. So, putting the sentence together. Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake earlier. Um, so it looks like... Because we have a nominative, templa can't be nominative. It has to be accusative. I apologize. Um, but templa bona, th that was going to be our direct object now. I'm sorry. Um, and let's see. Then we have in the beautiful land. And uh, frater malus ends up being our subject. So we see the evil brother of the king. Remember our genitive in there. 
Remember, the genitive is going to modify the closest logical noun. The only noun close by is frater, because so, faki is a verb, so there you go. The evil brother of the king. He makes... Good temples in the beautiful land. And that's that preposition. Don't worry too much about that. I just want you to see that Polkra agrees with Terra. And we see that um, Malos agrees with Frater. Bona agrees with Templa. That gray arrow for the genitive, that is not... Uh, modification from an adjective, uh, that's modification, that's adjectival, uh, and it's a genitive. So if you don't know what that is, go watch the video on genitives, it's on YouTube. But yeah, there's the sentence. The evil brother of the king makes good temples in the beautiful land. Okay, good stuff. So as, as you wrap up uh, adjectives, just keep in mind that um, it's just agreement in case number and gender. And uh, the dictionary entries can be a little confusing, but if you rewind and watch that part of it, I think you'll really get it because it really just organizes things into gender, all right? And so I would go back and watch those last couple slides and see if you can get how those things agree. And just keep in mind, they don't have to have the same endings. So we saw in the example with Frater and Malus agreeing, okay? So you don't always have to have... Uh, the exact same ending for a thing to agree. As long as they agree in case number and gender, their declension can be different. Declension does not mean anything about case number or gender. It's simply a pattern, okay? So put declension aside. Remember your ending so you can identify things, but put declension aside when trying to deal with case number and gender adjectival agreement.